You know when you just love a watch? There's no common sense to it, there's no logic to it, you just freaking love a certain watch. That's me and my Tudor Black Bay 58. Hi, I'm Brittany, and this is a video about my two years of wearing the Tudor Black Bay 58. So if you don't know much about the Tudor Black Bay 58 by this point, I mean, you probably will. I mean, it's been years of fanfare around this watch by this point. But if for some reason you don't know much about this watch, the Tudor Black Bay 58 was released in 2018, originally in the black and gilt variation. It's that perfect mashup of vintage design language and incredibly modern specifications, all being delivered to you at a pretty competitive price point. Since then, loads of different variations of this watch have been released over time. A gold variation, a silver, a bronze. But the one I have is the stainless steel and blue variation. And I love this watch. I think a good watch often represents a lot more in your life than just how good the specifications are. You know, this watch actually means a lot more to me than words can actually probably say. This was my first tool watch. It was my first dive watch. It was the most expensive watch I'd owned at that time. And it was a real turning point in me, going from someone who kind of liked watches to a full out watch geek. The portal door was open and I hadn't fully ventured into it, but this watch like kicked me in. This is Sparta! The Tudor Black Bay 58 was also something to get excited over during a pretty bleak time. I don't know if you remember, but this blue model was released in August 2020 at the height of the coronavirus pandemic. Watches and Wonders was cancelled and moved online. A lot of brands were holding on to their new releases to release them when things were back to normal. Holidays were cancelled. People had been homeschooling their kids. I don't know, there just honestly felt like there wasn't anything to get excited over during that time. And then, what felt like out of nowhere, rumors started spreading about this watch, a blue Black Bay 58. And sure enough, in August 2020, Tudor served it to us. One big thing for me and a major draw is the case size. This was around that time when it felt like watches kept getting bigger and bigger and I felt really sized out of most of the modern watches that I loved. But a 39mm, like, that's a size I can wear. This was the first dive watch ever that I had tried on that felt like the proportions were right for me. And 39mm is that perfect unisex size, kinda oversized on smaller wrists, which looks great, but then a very vintage tool watch proportions on a larger wrist. This was my first tool watch and I've been wearing it like a tool watch. I don't like to baby my watches that are made for rough and rugged wearing. So the bracelet is absolutely mangled. She's seen better days. And the clasp, <laughs> the clasp is so bad. She's a worn watch, even along the case on, on the slabs there. She's definitely a worn watch. There's a lot to love about this watch. So the 39 millimeter case size, stainless steel, aluminum bezel, which I personally prefer over ceramic. I think it's just that little bit more fit for purpose. And I prefer the matte effect over the high gloss shine of ceramic. 200 meters water resistance. And inside this watch is the manufacturer caliber MT5402, COSC certified, giving you 70 hours of power reserve. It's a lot of bang for buck, as the YouTubers say. It's 3,000 pound on the bracelet, which in the world of luxury watches isn't too bad, but in the real normal world that us watch geeks can easily forget about, that's quite a lot of money. <laughs> it's pretty expensive. So those are the positives, but there's also a lot of negatives and downsides that I've noticed, particularly after two years of wearing. So a reservation a lot of people have is the snowflake hands. I personally think they're perfect on a dive watch. High legibility, a lot of loom. Next, a lot of people don't like the faux rivets on the bracelet. 
you genuinely will never notice the faux rivets. I had the same reservations at first, but honestly, when it's on the wrist, you're never like, oh, these faux rivets. You just don't notice them at all. But I understand. I understand why people don't like them. But I have one gripe that has only grown over time, and that's the clasp. There is no on-the-fly adjustment or dive extension, and I just think it's such a missed opportunity on such a popular watch. With that said, Tudor did introduce the T-Fit clasp on a Black Bay 58 on the Bronze Boutique Edition Black Bay 58, which gives you five different positions and up to eight millimeters of extension. And I think this does show intent for Tudor to add the T-Fit clasp to all of the Black Bay 58 line. And all of this has me really thinking about the new Tudor Pelagus 39. So a lot of the gripes many people have with the Black Bay 58 are remedied in the new Tudor Pelagus. No faux rivets on the bracelet, T-Fit clasp. You will never be able to escape the snowflake hands on a Tudor diver. It's, it's just part of the turf. This new Pelagus really is an awesome package and that same versatile size of 39 millimeters. But could I justify adding this watch to the collection with a Black Bay 58? I feel like they're aesthetically different enough with the titanium rather than the steel and the kinda almost dull effect of titanium, the square indices, that red line of text, the sunburst bezel. There's a lot of aesthetic differences but then inside this watch is the same movement, the MT5400. So it's kind of like the Black Bay 58 and Pelagus had a love child and it almost feels different enough that I could justify it. Something to note is that the Pelagus 39 is 500 pounds more expensive than the Black Bay 58. Ooh, hold on. That's weird. So the Pelagus 39 has the MT5400 movement, but the Black Bay 58 blue and black have the MT5402, whilst everything afterwards, so that silver and gold, has the 5400. So they all have the same power reserve. They're all no date. What's the difference? Anyways, comment down below if you know the difference between the 5402 and the 5400. But this video is really about how my Black Bay 58 is holding up after two years of a lot of wear. And honestly, she has been the best daily wear I could ask for. I feel like it has become such a signature watch for me because I wear it so much. And it feels like a bit of everything I want from a tool watch. It's rugged and handsome. It's inexpensive enough that you're not afraid to get some scratches on it, but also expensive enough that it's special and you know that you're buying something special in a well-crafted mechanical watch. I think my Black Bay 58 is gonna be one of those lifelong watches for me. One of those watches I pass along to the kids one day and hopefully they wear it and love it. Bet they fucking sell it. Bet those little shits try to sell my heirloom that I'm kindly passing along. I'm gonna put so many scratches on it that they can't even sell it. No one's gonna want this thing. It'll practically be worthless. Take that future kids. Anyways, what do you think to the Tudor Black Bay 58? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Over time, have you liked it less? I don't know, tell us everything in those comments down below. Ooh, and I'd love to hear all of your thoughts on the Pelagus 39 as well. After some time has passed now, how do you feel about it? And do all that YouTube stuff, feed the algorithm gods, like, comment, subscribe. And until next time, you beautiful, gorgeous, fabulous, wonderful watch geeks. Hit them with the patron song. This is another song for my Patreon. Pope tier people. Ooh, ooh. Thank you, Pope to patrons. Thank you, all tier patrons, but especially the Pope tier. Yeah.